Hello, this is Mr. Manley. Before I answer this question, I want to take a look at something about the trigonometric circle. If you look at this trig circle down here, I want you to consider that what is happening in each quadrant. So first of all, remember how the quadrants are numbered. First, second, third, fourth quadrant. And then consider that each quadrant on this xy axis, for each quadrant, the x and y coordinates, for instance, in the first quadrant are both positive. In the second quadrant, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive. And then we have negative, negative. And in the fourth quadrant, positive, negative. And then also consider for each of these that we have a designation for that sign about whether it's the y coordinate or the x coordinate. So we have the x coordinate and the y coordinate, x and y, for each of these. With that information, Let's go ahead and dive into the problem here. We are being given some theta value that we don't know anything about, or we don't know anything about initially. There's some angle theta, and we're being asked about what quadrant it's in. Determine the quadrant. And here's the information that we have about it. We know that the tangent of the angle is greater than zero, and that the sine of the angle is greater than zero. Okay, so what does that tell us? Let's go back to our XYR definitions of trigonometry, of the trigonometric functions, and see if we can match up the XYR definition with this picture that I've given you at the bottom of the screen here. So if the tangent of theta is positive, that means that the y over the x value is positive. And in my picture down here, I have information about x and y values. And just consider this, that a positive x over a positive y will give me a positive value. So theta could be in the first quadrant, but a negative value over a negative value is also positive. So theta could be in the third quadrant. And that's all we would know at this point. Well, theta could be in the first quadrant, it could be in the third quadrant, but we have this other piece of information about sine theta. And sine theta is also positive. What that really means to us, the only thing that's impacting whether it is positive or negative is the y value. r does not have a sign. r, I guess, or we could say r is always positive. r would, I would never have a negative radius in this context. So sine of y means that y is positive, and y is positive here, and y is positive in the second quadrant as well. Well, theta has to satisfy both conditions. It can't satisfy one or the other. So the place where theta satisfies both conditions would be the first quadrant. So for part A, I know that theta is in the first quadrant. First quadrant would be how I respond to part A. And let's look at the second part, part B says that, what if sine theta is less than zero? Well, again, looking at our x, y, r definition, for sine theta be, to be less than zero, y would have to be negative. And I can see from my picture down here that y is negative in the fourth quadrant and y is negative in the third quadrant. Cosine theta is positive, or what if cosine theta is positive? So looking at our x, y, our definition, x would have to be positive 
for cosine theta to be positive. And x is positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Both conditions have to be met. So theta in this case is in the fourth quadrant for part B.